When it comes to tofu, your choice of silken tofu or firm tofu can make or break the dish. But this is one of those rare times where you can use either. If this is your first time to the channel, I'm Cassie, and in my kitchen in the suburbs of Japan, today we're going to be making agedashi tofu. Or in a more English accent, that is agedashi tofu. This is a really popular menu item at izakaya or Japanese pubs. It is a deep fried dish with a light and crispy outside and a soft and fluffy inside. And it's quite different to Western dishes because it doesn't have a thick batter and it really is quite soft on the inside. Usually, silken tofu and firm tofu have very different uses, but today it's purely down to personal taste. I really prefer the high contrast of the crispy outside and the soft and fluffy inside, so I'm going to be using a silken tofu. However, this does make it a little bit harder to handle when cooking and a little bit more likely to fall apart, so if you're not used to tofu, I would recommend starting with the firm tofu. Although the star of the show is of course the tofu itself, we are going to be putting the tofu into a liquidy soupy sauce, which is called tsuyu. In the most common and traditional versions of a tsuyu recipe, you would use a fish stock called katsu dashi. But today we are going to keep this strictly vegan and use a vegetable stock. This is a simple veggie scrap stock that I made during the week out of kabocha skin, daikon leaves and onion. But if you're going to make your own, then you can just use any vegetable scraps that you want, put it in some water with a little bit of salt and simmer it for about an hour. But you could of course instead use a vegetable stock cube. Or, if you want a mix between the traditional and the vegan, then you can use a kombu dashi, which is a seaweed stock. I find that my homemade vegetable stock gave it a slightly earthier, deeper and more umami flavour. And finally, you can top this with pretty much anything that you want. Today I'm just going to be topping it with shichimi, some grated daikon and some spring onions. But you can put on other things too, some of the most common ones are grated ginger and for the non-vegans, some dried fish flakes, which are called katsuobushi. So we've talked a lot about what goes into this agadash tofu and what exactly it is, but let's take a look at a concrete list of ingredients. For the fried tofu itself, all you need is your choice of tofu and some potato starch or corn starch. Everything else is for the sauce or garnish. And today I'm using some special orange flavored shichimi spice and my own homemade vegetable stock. For the most authentic experience, switch this out for some dashi broth. So first up, we're going to compress our tofu. There are a few other ways of deep frying tofu, and if you're going for a kind of fritter style in a different recipe, then you might want to compress this for a bit longer, but seeing as we're trying to keep that signature soft and fluffy inside, then we're only doing this for 15 minutes. I'm using silken tofu, so I'm going to compress it because it does have a lot more moisture, but if you are using firm tofu, you don't actually need to compress it, you can just leave it in a tea towel for 15 minutes. So leave your compressing tofu to one side and now we're going to prep the vegetables. We're going to start off by chopping up the spring onion. Today I have these spring onions which are supposed to be some kind of specialty. They're called Yamato Ikko Negi. And it seems that they're kind of supposed to be a halfway point between spring onions and green onions. So I'm guessing they're just a little bit milder, but that's just because they were highlighting them at my local supermarket. So please just use spring onions. This is just going to be a garnish. So we're just going to chop these up very thinly. And then put those to one side. And now we're going to grate some daikon. You really only need a small amount of daikon for this, about this much. But daikons are huge and I forgot about this when I ordered one. And so I ended up having to eat loads of daikon throughout the week. To be honest, the grated daikon is just a garnish, so it's not essential. So if you can't think of anything to do with your daikon or you can't buy a small amount of daikon, then you can just skip this part. So now to grate my daikon, I'm going to use this, which has a tiny little spout at the top here. 
So when I grate the daikon, then there'll be a lot of excess liquid and I can just go like this and all of the liquid comes out the spout and it's very useful. I put a link to a similar one of these below, so if you want to support me, then go ahead and go and order one of these. But otherwise, you can simply use a cheese grater or even rub the daikon against a sieve. Just remember if you do it without one of these or without a sieve, then you are going to get a lot of excess water, which you should push out with your fingers or with a paper towel. So now we're just going to put all our vegetables to one side and we're going to make the tsuyu, which is the sauce to go with our fried tofu. The sauce for our tofu is really, really simple. We're just going to put together our stock of choice, some soy sauce, and some mirin. And that's it. And then we just heat it up until it gets to boiling and then you can just turn off the heat. All we're doing here is heating it through. I find it good to leave it in the pot because then if it turns out that frying all of the tofu took longer than expected, then you can just simply heat up the pot again and it's ready to go. So now that all of our garnishes are ready, it's time to check on our tofu. So now I'm going to cut this tofu into eight pieces. It's much easier to put these into smaller pieces so that they don't break apart. To do this, I do use my hand on the side simply because the tofu is so soft that you can control your knife very well as you go through the tofu. However, do still be very careful. Then once the tofu is cut, we're going to get our oil ready. When you're deep frying, you should make sure that you have a pot with high walls to avoid any splatter or spillage. If you're going to do any more deep frying than just once, I would definitely recommend getting a thermometer. If you don't have an oil thermometer, it is very hard to gauge when to put in your tofu or when to put in anything that you're trying to deep fry. This can be a little bit dangerous if you don't know how hot it is. However, the main problem is usually for the texture and flavor of whatever you're deep frying. Today we're putting this at 160 to 170 degrees Celsius. I'm going to start off at the higher end of that range because as you put in the tofu, the temperature will drop and then hopefully it'll go to around 160 and just keep us within the 160 to 170 range. So now that my oil is at the right temperature and I can see that on my thermometer, we're going to put in the tofu. I coat each piece of tofu in potato starch just before I put it into the oil. I don't recommend pre-coating all of your tofu slices in potato starch because all of the moisture of the tofu is going to come out and it's going to cause the potato starch to get clumpy and get it stuck to your cutting board. For the coating for the tofu slices, then you can actually use cornstarch or a light flour, but I've got my pieces of tofu here that are covered in potato starch. So now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to put it into the oil. When you put the tofu into the oil away from you like this, then if there is any oil splatter, it will go away from you and not onto your skin, which will definitely hurt. Once you put it in, then we're going to keep it in that range of 160 to 170 degrees and just wait until it gets a nice light golden outer crust. This will take about two to three minutes per piece. And today I'm using cooking chopsticks, which are a lot longer than normal chopsticks to take out my deep fried tofu. However, this is definitely not the time to show off with chopsticks if you're not confident with using them because you will end up with some splattery, painful oil. Instead, if you're still not completely confident with cooking chopsticks, I would recommend a slotted spoon or a spider, or basically any cooking utensil that can withstand high heat and can drain out any of the excess oil. So once they have this nice light golden color, we're going to take them out and put them onto a wire rack. This is the kind of color that we're going for. There will be a couple of gold flecks, but basically it's a kind of whitish beige. If you're using chopsticks and you take the tofu out, then you might find that it actually feels like it's almost vibrating. There's just so much heat energy going on, it's kind of crazy. So we've got to eat this while it's hot, so let's see how our agadash tofu tastes. I have to say, whilst editing this, it's made me want to make it all over again. The outside is lightly crisp and the inside is soft and satisfying and warm.
The sauce is lightly salty and the spring onions give it a bit of a bite and I'm starting to drool. Okay, you guys better make this one because this is one of my favorites so far. Let me know if you do make it, but that's it for today. So I'll see you next Sunday.